I will not talk very much about what you insinuated about political considerations for creating committees, but I can assure you that the, all the committees that have been created have been created in line with the present realities that we're facing in the country at this time and why it is important that we have um, you know, you know, um, the right sort of structures to be able to attend uh, to these issues of oversight. And like I said again, um, there are no issues of overlaps. For us, we want to ensure that we have seamless engagement with um, the executive and that we don't have a situation where you have multiple people, uh, multiple honorable members or multiple committees um, you know, having to interface unnecessarily with um, ministries, departments and agencies. So those things have been clearly um, sorted out and clearly stated uh, in the House rules. Uh, Clara, from day one, so that if you have a, in parliamentary group of uh, Sweden, for example, you are an automatic member of the Foreign Affairs Committee. So anybody who is not a leader in the uh, parliamentary friendship groups is not a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee. So it's, it's a normal thing that goes on in Parliament ordinarily. But Mr. Speaker has made it more explicit and uh, clear and carrying people uh, along. That's what I would like to add. So it's not just 134 committees, 70 uh, uh, friendship groups. They are all intertwined. And it's all aimed at unity of purpose, achieving the aims, uh, the legislative agenda of the 10th Assembly. And Mr. Speaker should be commended for that.